Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm a public health nurse with the Village of Greendale Health Department, and I'm here in collaboration with the Wear Nature Center to help you protect yourself against summer supervillains and take on ticks. In this segment, we will be discussing how to create an at-home tick kit and how to do a tick check. Brooke and Bev have already probably shared with you about ticks, their life cycle, and how they fit into nature and our food chain. Ticks have their purpose, and it's important that we're not fearful of them and that we can enjoy nature because we are informed and prepared to handle all those fascinating details of nature and its creatures. Tick season is typically April through October. I wouldn't hold that date range as a concrete date range though, because we have heard people finding ticks as early as March and sometimes as late as December. So it is really important that you are aware of these sneaky little supervillains and they're not just a summer supervillain. Ticks are super stealthy. They're super sneaky, they're tiny, they move quietly, and when they're ready to hitch a ride on a human or an animal, they will move their little legs like this. And that is called questing. So that's how they're going to hitch their ride. To make sure that we are prepared, just in case those stealthy creatures grab hold of us, I'd recommend having a tick kit, just like you have a first aid kit at home, right? So a tick kit is something you put together so that you are prepared in case of a tick being attached or embedded to you, your children, your family, your pets. Uh, you will be prepared then to do what you need to do to safely get that tick out. One comment I want to make is that there are a lot of tips out there, such as putting a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol, petroleum jelly, putting nail polish on the tick, burning the tick out, those kind of things. Um, they're not guaranteed to get that tick out right away. And the key is the longer the tick is in, the more chance it has to spread disease and infection. So doing those kind of things, that gives too much of an opportunity for that bacteria uh, to make its way into your bloodstream. So best bet, get that tick out as quickly as possible. It's important to do tick checks and then to be prepared to remove them. So this is a, a tick kit that we've put together at the Greendale Health Department and we've handed these out for several summer seasons. Unfortunately, this year, because of social distancing and certain public health precautions that are in place right now, uh, we have not had a chance to get any of these out. So if you registered for this video series, the Greendale Health Department will be providing you with your very own tick kit. So while we go through this, you can use this video as an introduction to the items that you will receive. If you're watching this video and you haven't registered yet, um, your tick kit may look something more like this or you might have a fancy little bag you want to add it to, but the, the items that are inside are similar regardless. So things that you want to put in a tick kit. Number one, it's important to have a tweezers. You want to use that tweezers to get that tick out. Key you'll learn in the next video is to get the tweezers as close to the skin as possible so that you're pulling out as much of the tick as you can in a straight up fashion. You just gotta commit and yank. So it doesn't matter whether you have plastic tweezers or if you have metal tweezers, something that is going to pull that tick out. Next, we have some alcohol wipes. So you can buy prepackaged alcohol wipes or you could just make sure that you have a bottle of rubbing alcohol and cotton balls available. We want a Band-Aid. What a Band-Aid is gonna do is it's gonna go over that tick bite. It's gonna let you remember where that tick bite happened in case you need to talk to your doctor about any symptoms you might develop. And it also helps prevent any germs or other bacteria from getting in. So you pull the tick out, what do you do with it? Should you squeeze it? Should you soak it in alcohol? Should you flush it down the toilet? Should you release it into the wild? Our advice would be 
to have a little baggie. So this is the kind of little baggie that we have or a little envelope and save that tick in there. You can put the tick in the refrigerator, the freezer, um, put it on a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol inside this bag. You wanna to try to preserve that tick. And it's no, it's not because you want to have a museum of bugs and ticks and insects, but it's just in case you start to develop symptoms that may be related to your tick bite. Having that tick will help your doctor identify what you may have encountered. Um, if, it, if that tick had Lyme disease, they can get the tick tested. So it just helps provide that evidence in case it's needed. And it's kind of a cool souvenir, right? Additional things that we have in our tick kit uh, would be, we do have some Deep Woods bug spray wipes. So uh, this does have DEET in it. DEET is going to be recommended by the EPA as a good protectant against mosquitoes and ticks. Um, up to you what you choose to use, but this is what we provide and this is what we would recommend. Anything that has at least 25% D in it. So that's what we have there. We also have a tick kit content card. So this is gonna tell you everything that is in the kit so that if you do use something, you know exactly what you have to replace it with. These are printable off of the Wisconsin Department of Health Services website, or we can provide a link for you. Or if you get one of our tickets, you will have that in there. There's also another really great reference that is both printable or you can get it in your tick kit, is a tick safety guide. So on this tick safety guide, it will show you some pictures of different ticks. It will also show you the different sizes and the different life cycles that perhaps Brooke or Bev went over with you and then put it, it puts it in comparison to a dime. So they can be very, very tiny and very hard to find or see on you. It's important to do a thorough check. The rest of the card will give you details on how to remove a tick. In case you forget, can't find this video series or just need that direction right in front of you. And it also has an area where you can go and get more information from state provided websites and experts. Now, if you're making your own homemade tick kit, you might want to make it bigger in a big bag. You might want to add a box of cool band-aids. You might want to have a pencil, a sticky note, a note card, so you can write down details about where the tick bit you, where you were in nature, about what time, the date, any other fun facts. That might be something you want to add in there. This person has a mini magnifying glass in their tick kit. Maybe they feel a little bit more confident in their tick identification skills. They've also got some tape. Looks like they might have some Neosporin in there. I'm sure they have alcohol wipes in there. And it looks like they have some Tylenol in there too. So maybe this is more than just their tick kit. Could be a little bit of their first aid kit in there as well. And that's okay. We just want you to be prepared to have the tools that you need and that you're not running around freaking out because there's a tick embedded in you or your children or your pet. Because I know, been there. It's not a pretty sight and it's scary, but we don't need to be scared because we know what we have to do. We've received this information. We've received these resources and we're gonna be prepared and we're gonna be able to handle it. And if you have any questions, always feel free. You can contact the Greendale Health Department at 414-423-2110 and one of our public health nurses can answer or provide you in the right direction to answer any tick related questions that you may have. Thanks for watching this segment. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.